Hello everyone. Welcome to NPTEL course on rural water resource management. This is week 12, lecture four. In this week, we have been looking at multiple databases that can aid our understanding on rural water resource management and also get us data for future assessments of rural water resources. On this note, we will be looking at some more data from the water balance. In the past lectures, we looked at soil moisture, rainfall, storage, and other aspects of the water balance. In today's lecture, I will be showcasing the remote sensing power in collecting data for rural water management. So in the past uh, like lectures, we have seen that there are a lot of government data. However, the time and space in which it is available is limited. For example, your groundwater is taken in once in every four months. And it is not spread across the country, uh, but ha also has some concentrations in some regions. So this may not be applicable to a rural entity where they may not have any groundwater well monitoring system and or a river flowing through it so that there is discharge value. So in that kind of cases, it is best to augment, which means join observation data and remote sensing data. That is what IMD has done very clearly, the Indian, Indian Meteorological Department, where they take observation rainfall and then satellite rainfall data, and then they club it into one rainfall data. So now it is a mixture of observation and satellite data. Before that, it was only observation data or only satellite data, and there were some issues on both sides. But now when they are merged, uh, then the data product becomes more robust and also has better spatial and temporal resolution. Now, since this is attested, okay, we now know that remote sensing use is pretty good for our system. What do we do? We need to have more access to this data, right? So for that, ISRO has made a data website called Bhuvan. And this requires a lot of GIS and remote sensing, which you could learn from other resources, but I'm just going to focus on the rural water databases available in Bhuvan. So if you look at the progression of this two lecture series, you would have seen that I, I refer to papers, NGO reports, manuals, World Bank reports, et cetera. And then I also refer to the databases available in these systems. Then moving on, I also showed you how you could collect data from government and private entities. And now we have come to the remote sensing phase. So the Bhuvan database has a lot of applications and it is made by the ISRO team, Indian Space Research Organization under its multiple umbrellas, NRSC, RRSC, SAC, where they give near real-time data for rural water management. There are multiple data that come in and in the next lecture, which is uh, the lecture five, we'll be going through to show you how a model can be created for which you need multiple data and that data is not readily available. And so in that occasions, remote sensing data helps. Some data are very expensive to get. You have to buy it. And some data, the temporal or spatial resolution is limited. So how do you balance between these two? You add some open source satellite data which can capture all the dynamics, but it needs handholding of observation data. So the observation data you get from uh, your local resources, IMB, uh, CWC, et cetera, and then you merge it with the remote sensing data to get a good data product out. 
and they have done like this for near real time data for our water management what do you mean by near real time is almost uh, from the date of access it is very close so in the soil moisture i would say it is near real time because they were giving you data within 4 days whereas et they were giving you data in one week right so somewhere we could say that it is near real time all these data bases one uh, example of the data they give is ndvi which is a normalized difference vegetation index it is kind of an indicator about vegetation is vegetation there or not okay so you could use land use land cover but the land use land cover doesn't also talk about water and stress etc whereas this indicator can talk about it okay so how they estimate these indicators why etc is beyond the scope but what i'm trying to say is there are data for rural water management in the remote sensing platform for example rainfall slope how slopey the land is land use land cover if you have barren land versus soil data all these you can take from bhuvan then you have your ndvi like indicators which can be guiding you towards proper rural water management they are big data archive so you don't have to always download data and keep it on your system make it heavy you can always download whatever you need from these databases and then update keep updating your database with the data they have one more private agency is google earth engine which i will also showcase in this lecture because there are some data which you can get it from bhuvan but uh, there are other data which are available from google earth engine so google earth engine is similar to bhuvan but it brings in data from various satellite platforms not only uh, isro but it takes from nasa from the us uh, esa from the european space agency europe uh, japan etc so all these data come together in a single platform and uh, that is called google earth engine so let's look at this uh, bhuvan uh, i will first look at it so bhuvan has both light and uh, normal connect first i'll try to do the local normal bhuvan website because it has more uh, gui interface if it doesn't work because of the internet we will show you the light and this is how the google earth engine works so you have satellite data on one side it is mixed with algorithms the algorithms can be from google earth engine or your algorithm for example you want to mix data observation plus remote sensing data all these you can give algorithms you can type it as an algorithm in the google earth engine and it will run for you and give the output the output could be a merged product the output could be um, a scaled uh, product or a zoomed in product of a particular region you can also have multiple layers together to give one value uh, which talks about stress indicators for rural water management let's take an example so rural water management stress can be indicated by your um, water levels in the dam okay so water level could indicate stress another indicator could be your uh, rainfall if the rainfall is not there you can say it is a stress the other indicator is you will have lot of water but if the plants are taking more water because of the crop type you can like eucalyptus then you will say it is another stress so these stresses need not be just associated with one data like for example rainfall it can be associated with multiple data so we have to be open to capture these multiple data to assess what is the rural water risk and that helps us to be different than just looking at rainfall for example if we just look at rainfall and say oh the the water is there so they should be okay but then when you go to the ground you notice that uh, the rainfall happens but everything washes away because the slope is so high the uh, runoff happens or the plants are taking too much water than needed eucalyptus so you don't have water in the land lakes and ponds so these kind of things can be put in a model after you understand for which you need multiple databases just not having uh, rainfall or soil moisture can help for this exercise because the problems are complex and multidisciplinary 
So you also need multidisciplinary approach to capture the data and use the data in your rural water resource assessment um, work. It could be uh, simple or very complex. Either way, you have to include multiple data. This not one data is enough. Okay? For example, you'll have rainfall, but no discharge. Maybe there's a dam which is actually uh, closing the water for which you need the location of the dams. And then the slope of the land where the water is taken from rainfall into the uh, dams, okay? Okay, so now we are going to look at this uh, Bhuvan website. So I'm going to share uh, the website of Bhuvan. Okay, so I'll just first start with the Google search. You can just type Bhuvan Isro. And then the first one is India Geo Platform of Isro, Indian Geo Platform of Isro. And you can see dot NRSC, which is the National Remote Sensing Center. So as I said, they take the data and then they put it in these kind of um, platforms so that anyone can access. A lot of people access this data, multi, uh, multiple people from India and abroad. So it is a very useful website for data collection. Let's do the open archive data. Okay, this is much faster than the WRIS website. Um, data is more, but still, uh, I think because you saw they have some really uh, good hardware and computers, uh, they would have uh, better access to these. So you could see that you can actually type in a location to zoom in to a particular location and see the data. Then you can collect the data and process it. Once you visualize the data, processing and collecting the data is a different um, source like GIS and the remote sensing platforms, which is not part of this course. I'm just going to show you the data availability. How you use it in your work is uh, a different class. Okay. So right now I would just want to show you what data is available so that you could have idea that data is available. I would need to just learn the techniques. Good. So I would first you can go to satellite, the first tab on the open data archive. It will give you per satellite what data is available. Since we are starting fresh, I will join with you guys to start afresh that we don't know what satellite gives what products. So let's not use that tab. Let's go to theme and products. So in theme and products, you can pull the drop down menu. You can have land and terrain. So I just click land and terrain. What does land and terrain give? It gives you the elevation gradient, how elevated the land is, where are the depressions, etc., for storage structures, uh, farm ponds, those kind of things we can look at. Okay, so that is all given here with some snow albedo values, which we're not using at this stage. Then the ocean and physical products, you can click ocean and physical, and then you can see heat wave, temperature, uh, cyclones, those kind of things. Because if you're in the coastal region, these data would help or, or, or is needed very much for understanding the um, water coming in, like in terms of rainfall, temperature, currents, all these things we can look at. The most important one we'll be looking for this class is the land and vegetation theme and products. Okay, so uh, before we go then, I'll just finish this off also. So in program and projects, you'll see like there is a national climate change study which has been done and a high resolution uh, elevation map which has been done. These are still updated. So you could uh, use it if you need, but I'll go back to theme and products and then uh, land and vegetation. In the land and vegetation, you have products such as normalized difference vegetation index, the, the MDVI, which I talked about, uh, or you have the global coverage and the local coverage and then the vegetation fraction. Let's first look at the vegetation fraction. When I click vegetation fraction, then the definition of the vegetation fraction comes up, which actually says, what is the percentage or fraction of occupation of vegetation canopy, trees, um, crops, etc., to the area. So if you have um, uh, 100 acres and 50 acres are uh, with 
the crops, then it is 50% is the vegetation fraction. And this fraction is given as a color and the color is painted on this map uh, when you look at it. So you can look at individual products, the date in which you want, you can click it and then it says that every 15 days there's a map. Okay, the last one we have is this December. So I'll just click December and then view. Beautiful. So you have the India colored with anywhere from red to green and red um, uh, implies that there is less uh, vegetation, crop, uh, etc. Whereas your green would indicate a lot of forest cover uh, along the area. So you see here, and same like your WRS, you can zoom in and zoom out, uh, those kind of things. The color is given here, December 1 to uh, 1521. If you use a slider, it will jump the dates and go to a different date. Uh, what it tells you is there is some cloud cover here. The white is not like empty spaces. It is not no data. It is cover with uh, cloud. Okay, there's a lot of cloudy event in December. And what you can see is these areas are 90 to 100 percent. Uh, having the vegetation, uh, which means that um, full 100 by 100 percent is given taken up by the vegetation. Whereas uh, in the red areas, as I said, these are the desert regions, etc. You see only 20 to 30 percent of the land being converted to vegetation. Actually, that is in the most parts of India. Uh, you have that in in because of the Kaveri, the southern part is also having less water and high water stress. The vegetation fraction can be converted to an ET value because now you know the area. And in the previous class, we discussed about evapotranspiration. So for a particular area, you know the evaporation rate, you can simply multiply the area, which is a unit of meter squared, along with your evapotranspiration, which is units of meters, to get cubic meters of volume of water which is lost. These help widely in understanding the groundwater potential, the surface water potential and remaining water resources in rural India. Because as I said, there won't be any data collected in some of these regions. Look at it like whole of India is painted and colored with different values. Uh, which means that the high spatial and temporal resolution data is helping. Uh, this data is actually merged with the previous uh, Central Railroad Board SWID data, where they can have better indicators of why this groundwater is depleting or rural water is depleting. Because now you have the maps which show how much uh, fraction of the land is vegetated and what type you have to go down to the ground. This is one data product that we saw. The next data product is normalized difference vegetation coverage for India, just for India. It doesn't populate yet because you haven't taken the date. And as I said, it's near real time. When you click the data, you can have until December of 2021, which is kind of near real time. Uh, when you do in your, in your summer time, you would see that during the growing period, you'll see that uh, you'll have higher data, like just a week before, two weeks before data you'll have. Right now, because in March uh, and um, uh, February, there's not much crops growing. It is the winter season and the post monsoon season. So you won't see much vegetation index showing in this um, uh, maps. Then we have the normalized vegetation index NDVI, which is a measure of the amount of vegetation on the land surface. Uh, and NDVI spatial composite images are developed to more easily distinguish between greenish green vegetation from the bare soils. Bare soils is a uh, brown soil which does not have that much of crops. Right now, the data is coming up. You could see that 0 to 10 uh, NDVI means almost barren, and this part is where you have your uh, deserts and other regions. Whereas most of this part, the alluvial aquifers, et cetera, is around 20 to uh, 5.30, uh, the um, 20.5 to 30, the, the NDVI range, okay? Still, it's, it's less vegetation. Anything above 50, which is the green color, 
would show healthy vegetation. Okay, so fifties are okay vegetation, whereas eighties and nineties are high healthy vegetation. So Ninety to hundred is mostly the forest, and that is why you can see forests here in the Western Ghats, some in the Eastern Ghats, and also in Assam regions, the northeastern India. A lot of beautiful forests are there, right? So all this can be analyzed from the NDVI data from the one website. So if you're working on government projects, they would love to see these kind of images more than the Google Earth engines, which are going to show. Okay. So how do we know what data, what method they use? For that, they have the brochure. You can click the brochure and it will open as a PDF file. It will tell you what satellite was used, which pay mission, which payload, etc., was used to collect the data. They'll talk a lot about the technical parts of the data in the brochure. It's like buying this satellite data product, but you know it, it is just free. Okay. The next part is your technical document, which basically gives you the methodology on how they collected the data, what is the resolution. Um, the image. So this is how they calculated the uh, NDVI. Okay, and then there is a, a volume fraction, vegetation fraction. So all these have been given specifically for this, and the data that they use would also be told what data they use to estimate these values um, properly. Then we have the entire world uh, data, but again, as I said, uh, it takes a lot of cumbersome images to uh, take from the world data to your location. So we will not be doing that. We'll just show you what is India data. Okay. So we have seen um, the data range from almost 15 days. You can look at it, 15 days, December 1 to 15. And then the Jan part is not there because they haven't updated it. But normally during the growing period, you will see this data available. So now you know the land use land cover type, you have the evapotranspiration, you can multiply the area to get the volume that is lost from the water balance equation. There are other products also that we could show. One uh, product I would like to show is the uh, DEM pro project. So DEM are digital elevation models, how the elevation is occurring in the land. And again, you don't need to put a date here because the elevation of the land is a stationary property. It may change because of land subsidence, uh, earthquakes, movement, plate movement, tectonic movements, but it doesn't change every day like your soil moisture, ET or your um, uh, NDVI. Okay, so all these are non-stationary products, whereas here the, the location and the elevation for that location is a stationary product. You can see this, you can download uh, exact range and uh, the technical document will give you what these colors mean. For example, if I, if you want to see Pune, okay. The map can go to Pune and locate your uh, elevation gradient, but you cannot directly access the values from here. It's just colored, but the coloring is based on a particular value. So what you have to do is you will have to uh, learn GIS to work on these data maps or MATLAB, Scilab, those kind of programs where they can take these GIS maps and then convert it into an Excel database. Okay, so we have seen uh, the NDVI and other ranges uh, uh, in, uh, okay, it's asking which Pune, there's so many Pune. Okay, there you go. Uh, so Pune has been located, the dot, and that dot means, okay, then I'll just take this box of data to come. For example, I'm going to start, I'm just going to click this box data only I want. Okay. So you could take at least two data, but let me see. Okay. So you have selected all these uh, 
blocks uh, of tiles of data. You can download now them as a stock. You can download them for your Pune work because Pune, that's the center, but part of it also the district boundary also lies in the other region. So this is all with Bhuvan. Now let me move on to Google Earth Engine. So all I have to say is Google Earth Engine. You can type it in Google. GEE -E is the short form and you can, you'll be pulled up to this. If you have a Gmail account, you'll automatically be um, having an account on Google Earth Engine. Uh, now we'll just look at data sets. So I'm just clicking data set, which is on the top and then uh, waiting for the data sets to uh, upload. Okay, what it says is there's all a lot of data sets. You can go to view all data sets. And then there's a search box which helps you to select the data. Okay, so it is running, um, but you can also type it here and then click search. Yeah, so here's all the data set. In the find all data sets, as I said, this is a big, big uh, data set because it has a lot of satellite data from different parts of the country uh, and the world. So you will have a lot of data on this. Let's say evapotranspiration. Okay, so there are a lot of products. There is a different couple products, ALS, chili product, uh, isolation heat, uh, actual evapotranspiration, decadal daily evapotranspiration, uh, Terra data. So there's a lot of data which does this uh, ET estimate, different satellites. So the NRSE may be a different satellite. This can be a different satellite, okay? For my early warning system, um, okay. I'm going to click the Terra climate. So I will show you how to read the data out. Once you click the Terra climate, the metadata or the data about the data comes in. And then you can see the description and read how to get the data, look at the data. In the bands, you can click and see what is each band related to, what is the date, what is the data available. So as I said, we want reference evapotranspiration and accumulation of precipitation. So you have uh, ET, uh, the reference evapotranspiration is given as millimeter, same unit. Uh, the minimum is zero, maximum is 4548 millimeters. Then you have max and min temperatures. The good thing about this is when you download this data, you can readily apply it to your GIS platforms so that you can download the data and work on the water budget equation. So here you can see one satellite can give you wind speed, vapor pressure, maximum minimum temperature, snow water equivalent, uh, surface uh, short radiation, how much radiation comes in, uh, and then soil radiation, uh, soil moisture uh, data, runoff, precipitation, uh, reference ET, all these things. So all this data is shown. I'll also quickly uh, give an example of the data. Okay, so I'm just going to come down and say open code editor. So before that, it just uh, went back to the search. I'm going to say evapo transpiration. Maybe for the bandwidth, I'll close some of the websites. Yes. Okay. I'm just using the first to see. And then here you have the bands as a soil evaporation, interception, vegetation transpiration. So, so evaporation and transpiration are kept separately. Okay. And then I can open it in code editor. So in editor, the map will open. And this one doesn't pull down your system. It, it, for example, it is a lot of data, but it doesn't actually work on the data on your computer. It works silently behind. And this is the Google Earth Engine, the gearbox, which turns and collects data for you. Okay, so I'm going to run this. Again, the code just gives you running of the layers, and then the layers are plotted. What this code does, how it, it runs, etc., I would request you to read about these uh, Google Earth Engines. 
my point here to show that there are multiple data available and different platforms available for rural water management. Okay, the whole world is now populated. You see that it just runs back and forth because it's a complete picture of all the countries. But for us, let's go to India. Okay, so the India platform is shown uh, and you can download the data just for India or other countries depending on what you want to uh, work on. So here it is, we have data for India uh, from soil moisture, uh, open body uh, transpiration, all these things, uh, which are very, very useful for farmers, but you need to localize the solution and give it. Giving an India size image may not get that much traction from farmers. You need to give localized advisories and localized data. With this, I am closing today's session. Thank you.